All the mannequins in this exhibition have been kind of molded for every piece to make sure to fit because when you have a corset with the waist that is let's say 18 to 20 inches it needs to fit and when you dress a mannequin for an exhibition it's not the same than when you dress a human being and you can say like push or pull your your belly in or it's not working so we had to uh, to adjust all the mannequins the idea to have some mannequins with different positions that, as you say, that are sensual or are... The, the goal when you show clothes, mostly when you show couture clothes, which are fabulously... So many hours and some of them, like when you see the leopard dress that it's only beads that took a thousand and sixty hours to create or some other pieces like this, you want to show them at their best. So it's important to create positions that look real, in fact, as if it was human beings where them like on the moving catwalk. Of course, all the models needed to either have a pose like the models have at the end of the catwalk or either just to seem walking very like naturally. All the mannequins of the exhibition are very special because in fact, we have two kinds of mannequins, one that we had to adapt because uh, many of them are animated in the exhibition, as you can see in different sections, like in the opening, where you have all the virgins and the sailors and Jean-Paul Gaultier, who have heads that are animated. So we work with a company from Montreal named UBU, with uh, Denis Marlowe and Stephanie Jasmin, uh, who adapted the technique that they use for theater. And uh, in fact, uh, we hired some actors and some of Gauthier's muses, like Ev, the model from the 1990s, who had the shaved head with the dragon tattoo, uh, the bass player from Smashing Pumpkins, even me, I was the prototype for it, and Jean-Paul Gauthier greets the visitors. So in fact, all the mannequins are animated and speak to each other and interact and sing and read poetry and everything in different languages. The idea of the animated mannequins came from, in fact, Jean-Paul Gaultier had seen a play uh, in Avignon from Denis Marlowe, uh, and he was fascinated by the idea of having animated mannequins uh, uh, to have like these kind of ghosts uh, in the play. And after that, uh, I was talking to him at one point, and there's this movie called Falbala, which is a French movie from 1944. And it's about the story of a fashion designer who comes to Paris and he falls in love, he falls in love with the model over there. And uh, at one point he just becomes crazy about this woman. And he looks at one of the mannequins, which is just a fiberglass mannequin like in the exhibition, and the mannequin becomes alive. And he just escapes with the mannequin and, and finally he was just having hallucinations. So it was about this idea, like the myth of Pygmalion to have, uh, you know, something that is not real that becomes alive and it also it's to give a new approach to visitors to museum to make it more interactive in a way but also to uh, to reflect the the world of Jean-Paul Gaultier to show that there is different types of people and that everybody is welcome and it it doesn't change if you're 18 or 85 years old so you have people from different origins who speak different languages who have different skin tones who have different shapes who are very different um, and that's the, the strong social message that is important in Gautier's work that we wanted to reflect in this universe that in fact we want the visitors to be uh, really included in this world so they can relate to anyone who speaks Japanese or Chinese or Spanish in the exhibition. Yeah.